July 1988. A US Navy cruiser is battling Iranian gunboats in the Persian Gulf. Suddenly, its radar picks up a mystery aircraft. Is this plane friend or foe? They have seven minutes to decide. As the aircraft draws ever closer, the pressure mounts. And the captain is faced with a terrible choice. Shoot it down or risk the lives of his own crew. It's a routine short-haul flight, but an Iranian passenger jet is heading into mortal danger. It's opening fire with guns. It's approaching a war zone in which a US Navy ship is engaged in combat. The crew are on a state of high alert. Anything that draws near is seen as a threat. Air contact still inbound, increasing speed and descending range 11 miles. United States Naval warship. Closing and descending 1,000. Now you're in real serious business. You are standing into danger. Wait a minute. I could be dead. Range 13 miles. The aircraft is not responding to warnings. Iran Air 655 seems oblivious to the danger. In 1988, Iran and Iraq have reached a stalemate in a savage eight-year conflict. It's a war of attrition, and both sides' oil exports are a target. The United States has become the chief watchdog of the Persian Gulf. Over 30 US warships protect neutral tankers. Dawn, July the 3rd. After a month on routine patrol, the USS Vincennes is heading towards port in Bahrain. Her crew are due a few days rest and recuperation. But while his men are looking forward to the July the 4th break, Captain Will Rogers is already up. He's received disturbing reports from US intelligence, warning him to expect trouble from Iranian forces over this holiday weekend. Yeah. In the Vincennes Combat Information Center, the watch officer has received an urgent message from another ship in the US fleet that Iranian gunboats are harassing a Pakistani merchant vessel. Skipper, you better come down. Sounds like the Montgomery's got her nose in a beehive. I'll be right there. The frigate USS Elmer Montgomery is north of the Vincennes near the narrow Strait of Hormuz. It's here that Iranian gunboats have been most active in attacking oil tankers as they exit the Persian Gulf. Designed to protect an aircraft carrier group, the Vincennes is a billion-dollar Aegis cruiser. It's armed with Mark 26 missile launchers, Harpoon anti-ship missiles, two 5-inch guns, and the Phalanx close-in weapons system, which fires over 3,000 rounds a minute. But what makes the ship so special is its high-tech radar. The phased array Spy-1 can simultaneously search and track over 100 targets over 300 kilometers away. To crew members like Mike Zonino and Mark Nielsen, the Vincennes is simply Star Wars at sea. I was very proud. Just technically, it just felt like a strong, secure ship to be on. We felt invincible in a way. We had some of the most up-to-date weaponry and the radar and everything else. There wasn't a whole lot that we couldn't do. Inside the Combat Information Center, Captain Rogers oversees a state-of-the-art computerized command and control system. His large screen displays give him an instant picture of the tactical situation. 
Lieutenant Commander Vic Guillory is the tactical action officer responsible for surface warfare. Vic, what do we got on visual? We got a cluster of bog hammers here near the Montgomery. Another cluster may be closing a merchant vessel. Over a dozen Iranian bog hammer gunboats appear to be preparing to attack a merchant ship. Bog hammers are the generic name for fast speedboats manned by the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, a fundamentalist paramilitary force. We knew that they had rockets. Uh, we knew that they had machine guns. We knew that if they got within a certain range that they could you know, literally fire off their rockets and cause grave danger. In 1988, Iranian forces have been attacking up to 13 foreign tankers per month. Their aim is to prevent Saddam Hussein from exporting Iraqi oil. Captain Rogers sends his helicopter, call sign Ocean Lord, to investigate just what the gunboats are up to. Roger that, then sends out. Vector in Ocean Lord. Ocean Lord is a Sikorsky Seahawk, a twin-engine helicopter designed for reconnaissance, anti-submarine and anti-ship warfare. Roger, Trinity Sword, we read you. Vectoring toward Montgomery now. Ocean Lord's pilot soon finds the gunboats. They're not acting suspiciously. But he flies too close to the Iranian craft. The response is immediate, a burst of anti-aircraft fire. Jesus! Trinita Lord, this is Ocean Lord, 2-5. We are taking fire. Executing evasion. Clearing. 2-5, this is Trinity Sword Actual. Is anyone hurt? Confirm hostile fire. Over. Trinity Sword, no injuries. We confirm eight to ten rounds of airburst from the northernmost group of Iranian small craft. Over. Ocean Lord, this is Trinity Sword Actual. Return immediately to Vincennes cover. Close Ocean Lord's position at best speed, bearing 3-3-0. Three, three, Under the US rules of engagement, Captain Rogers is allowed to respond with force in self-defense. full speed. Set general quarters. Officer of the deck, set general quarters. The situation is escalating rapidly. General quarters, general quarters, all hands when we went to general quarters, all of the hatches had to be tightened down. Everything had to be at a certain level of defense in case something happened. Once you get to that station, you're supposed to you don your, uh, your helmet uh, and your, your gas mask. Nobody's allowed to move around the ship. Uh, you're supposed to stay at your battle stations doing your job. Only six and a half minutes after Rogers calls general quarters, the Vincennes is ready for combat. The crew have practiced the drill many times, but today it's for real. By chance, a Navy media crew is on the bridge filming as the ship surges north at over 30 knots. Captain Rogers is now heading for a lethal confrontation with the Iranian gunboats. It will be the Vincennes' first time in action. The outcome will be catastrophic. July the 3rd, 1988, the USS Vincennes powers north towards the Strait of Hormuz. Another US ship has reported aggressive activity by Iranian gunboats. Those boats have already fired on the Vincennes helicopter. Jesus! Captain Will Rogers III has been in the Gulf for just over a month, but he's already established a reputation as a commander who is prepared to take robust action. His ship is nicknamed the Robo Cruiser. The deck set general quarters. Meanwhile, some 87 kilometers away at Iran's Bandar Abbas airport, Iran Air Flight 655 is waiting to push back for a routine 28 minute hop across the Strait of Hormuz to Dubai. 37 year old Mohsen Rasayan is the captain. His brother Hossein knows he's dedicated to the job. 655 standing by for ATC clearance. He was very really enjoying what, what he was doing. He really liked it. He was logging so many hours, uh, over 10,000 hours of uh, flight. Request update on status of IR. Captain Rezaian's flight is delayed. It's 27 minutes behind schedule due to a passenger with immigration problems. The holdup will soon confuse the crew of Vincennes despite all their sophisticated technology. 
On the bridge, a Navy media crew continues to film as the Vincennes closes within striking distance of the Iranian Boghammer gunboats. Even though his helicopter has already been shot at, Captain Rogers only has the authority to open fire if he believes his ship is under direct threat. In the Gulf haze, it's hard to see just what the gunboats are doing. One appears to be going out to starboard and one's in the middle. But Captain Rogers doesn't have to wait for the gunboats to open fire. If they behave aggressively, that's reason enough for him to take the first shot. Coming inbound fast. One at three, five, zero is inbound. As they turn and begin to maneuver and, and close us fairly high speed and on erratic courses, uh, we ask permission to fire a warning shot. This is Vincennes. Request permission to engage Boghammer Group. The service commander for the Gulf is on board his ship in Bahrain. Captain Richard McKenna has no hesitation in granting permission. The fact that the helicopter was shot at uh, virtually required a response. Vincent, this is Gulf Sierra. Take Boghammer Group with guns. The rules of engagement at that juncture were quite clear, and so there was no question as to what was required at that juncture. I say again, take Mark Hammer Group with guns over. Gulf Sierra, this is Vincennes, opening fire with guns, assumed hostile track 4456. Vincennes out. You can fire for effect. It's 9.43 a.m. A routine encounter in the Persian Gulf has become deadly serious. The ship shakes. Um, it's a five-inch gun. I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of powder behind it to, to propel that projectile. This is the first time that the crew of the Vincennes have ever seen action. It's a zero to eight now. Combat was, you know, that was the furthest thing probably from any of us. Even though we were a combat ship, it was, it was one of those things. It's like, uh, it never happened to us, but yet it did. The gunboats are now shooting back, but their fire is falling well short. The Vincennes and the Montgomery take them on together. The battle is fast moving with frequent changes of course. We were maneuvering rapidly because, in the first place, my, my desire was to keep them at arm's length, if you will. We were shifting targets as rapidly as we could, and uh, Montgomery, at the same time, was uh, directed to engage a small craft, which he did. Verify me rounds to the train. The Vincennes and the Montgomery are now locked in a full-scale sea battle. Anything that approaches the U.S. ships will be assessed as a possible threat. Lieutenant Commander Scott Lustig is the officer responsible for alerting the captain to potential airborne threats. He's been tracking an aircraft that has suddenly changed course and is now heading towards the Vincennes. 472, Iranian P3, range 62 miles. The plane has been identified as an Iranian P3 Orion, a long-range maritime surveillance aircraft. In a well-rehearsed procedure, the Vincennes warns the P-3 on a military frequency that he's being tracked. This is United States Naval Warship. Of course, you state your intentions. U.S. Warship, this is Iranian Papa 3. Our intention is search mission. We keep clear of your unit. The pilot promises to keep his distance, but Captain Rogers knows the P-3 is still watching him on radar. He's concerned that it could call in an Iranian airstrike. This battle is becoming more dangerous by the minute. Yeah, hey, I want rounds in the tray. Give me a firing solution for that northernmost group of bog hammers. Scott, keep me updated on the P-3. Meanwhile, with all his passengers finally on board, Captain Rezaian is ready to depart. Confirm, taxi bay five is open. Iran Air 655. On the 3rd of July, there are 10 civilian flights scheduled from Bandar Abbas. But the Iranian Air Force also uses this airport. 
U.S. intelligence has warned that the recent transfer of F-14 fighters here represents an increased threat. Have a nice flight. 655 cleared for takeoff. Thank Captain Razayan has no way of knowing that Iran Air 655 is heading directly towards a raging sea battle. Within seconds of liftoff, the Vincennes detects Flight 655. Sophisticated as the radar is, it cannot determine the size or type of aircraft. Identification supervisor Anderson begins a routine to establish whether the aircraft is a friend or foe. His first step is to use a system called IFF. All large aircraft have IFF. They all have identification friend or foe. Every aircraft has its own code, and you're able to look up that code and say, OK, it does give you more information. Anderson sets out to identify the IFF signal of this incoming track. At the press of a button, an electronic pulse radiates into the atmosphere. And aircraft transponders automatically bounce back an electronic reply, squawking the signature modes and codes that reveal whether the aircraft is a friend or foe. Modes 1, 2 and 4 indicate military aircraft. Iran Air 655 has squawked mode 3. Everybody has mode 3. So they, that alone doesn't identify a non-hostile aircraft. It could be civilian, it could be military. As a military aircraft could conceal its identity by squawking mode 3, Anderson's next step is to consult a commercial air schedule. He looks to see if there's a passenger flight due to depart from Bandar Abbas at this time. But he finds nothing. Unidentified Iranian aircraft on course 203, speed 303 knots, altitude 4,000 feet. This is United States. So the Vincennes now tries to contact the plane directly on a military distress frequency. 40 miles from you. You are approaching United States naval warship in international waters. Request you state your intentions. Over. But there's no response. For all its state-of-the-art technology, the Vincennes doesn't have a radio tuned to civil air traffic control frequencies. Unidentified aircraft on course 206 speed. So the only option left is for the ship to call the mystery aircraft on the civilian international air distress frequency. You're approaching a United States naval warship. Request you remain clear. But there's still no answer from Flight 655. With the incoming plane closing in on the Vincennes at 8 kilometers every minute, Anderson is now alarmed to discover its IFF signal appears to have changed. The plane is squawking both mode 3 and mode 2, 1100. When Anderson consults his code list, he makes a disturbing discovery. The 1100 suggests that this plane could be an Iranian F-14 fighter. All stations IDS, I have a possible mode 2 on track 4131-1100, which breaks as an F-14. Possible mode 2, breaking as an F-14. I repeat, incoming mode 2. Anderson's words spread like wildfire throughout the CIC. The aircraft is now labeled as an F-14 fighter on the tactical displays in front of Captain Rogers. 48 kilometers away, the Airbus with its 290 passengers climbs out over the Persian Gulf. They have no idea that they've been misidentified and are flying into danger. An Iranian passenger jet heading for Dubai is unknowingly flying directly towards a US warship engaged in battle in the Strait of Hormuz. On board the USS Vincennes, identification supervisor Anderson thinks the airliner is an Iranian fighter jet. Zero, which breaks as an F-14. Possible mode two. In the Combat Information Center, Flight 655 is now labeled as a hostile F-14. In the 1970s, the US sold 80 F-14s to their then ally, the Shah of Iran. They are the most up-to-date fighter in the Iranian Air Force. The Vincennes crew think they're under attack. My heartbeat was way up, my blood pressure was way up. It was like, wow, I mean, the adrenaline was just flowing. 
Lieutenant Commander Scott Lustig is Captain William Rogers' anti-air warfare coordinator. With the incoming plane only 45 kilometers away, he seeks permission from headquarters to shoot it down if it comes too close. My position, my intention is to engage at 20 nautical miles if he does not turn away. Do you concur? Over. You should warn aircraft first, then take it under fire. You start crossing 20 miles, and that's an absolute threat to the ship. You're out there in the middle of the ocean. Uh, it's that it's serious business. The pressure on Captain Rogers is mounting. But at this critical moment, just when he should be focusing on this new threat, his attention is drawn back to the battle with the gunboats. We've got a foul bore down here. Captain, we have a situation with Mount 51. In the midst of combat, the Vincennes forward five-inch gun has jammed. A right, uh, full rudder turn. Bridge CIC. Hard to port. Steady shifts course. 280 degrees, maintain speed. Test 25 knots. Rogers is forced to turn his ship at high speed, swinging the cruiser's rear gun around to face the incoming fire. ship leans, so uh, if anything was not tied down, it, of course, went everywhere. It went sliding off up against the wall. It turned sharp enough that if you were standing, you had to hold on to something to keep from falling over. Bring that gun to bear now. As Captain Rogers struggles to keep the gunboats engaged, Captain Rezaian is busy with the routines of climbing to cruising altitude. FIR 58, Dubai 0715. Confirm you are squawking 6760. Affirmative. Confirmation that his aircraft is transmitting the correct civilian IFF code so that it can be easily identified on radar. In the Vincennes Combat Information Center, Lieutenant William Mountford sees that the approaching plane is now squawking a Mode 3 IFF response. He thinks it may not be a military aircraft after all. Sir, possible calm air. Captain Rogers acknowledges the warning, but he's still concerned by the plane's failure to respond. The aircraft was warned, it's warned a number of times, uh, continued to close. Time is a demon here. If I have long time to sort things out, you're going to take more time to look at this and more time to look at that. Unidentified aircraft. On As Flight 655 one, crosses the critical 37-kilometer threshold, the Vincennes warns it once again to alter course or risk the consequences. One, 20 miles from you. You are standing into danger and may be subject to United States defensive measures. Request you remain clear of me. Captain Rogers now has the authority to shoot the plane down. Captain, do you wish to engage at 20 miles? Captain, do you wish to engage the target at 20 miles? I had difficulty at 20 miles. I just did not want to shoot. I could not believe that this was really happening to us. Captain, do you wish to engage the target at 20 miles? Negative. Captain Rogers has delayed firing, hoping that the plane will finally respond to the Vincennes warnings. But what happens next destroys that faint hope. Petty Officer Leach is the Vincennes Tactical Information Coordinator. He's responsible for ensuring that all air contacts are properly tracked. What he reports now seems to remove any doubts. This is a hostile aircraft. Altitude declining. They see the plane diving towards them, a classic attack profile. Now you're, you're in real serious business because anything can happen at that point. Um, whether that aircraft might launch something at you, it could be the aircraft itself. 15 miles, that's pretty, pretty close and pretty serious. Iranian aircraft on course 211, speed three, Track 4131 approaching 13 approach. nautical United miles. States naval warship operating in international waters. Wait a minute, I could be dead. 
the tension is just continually rising during this whole time. Everybody was on edge. Everybody was like, oh my god, oh my god, what's going to happen next? Subject to United States defense measures. Inbound air contact closing and descending 1,000 feet per mile. <laughs> Range 13 miles. Oh my god, it's getting closer. It's getting closer. What's the captain going to do? What's going to happen? You know, what are they going to do? Iran Air 655 now signs off with Bandar Abbas air traffic control. Point four. Have a nice flight. Thank you. Good day. God damn it, he's getting close. Mark, incoming bog hammer. Bearing 0, 4, 2. Air contact still inbound, increasing speed and descending range 11 miles. Captain Rogers' worst fear is that the Vincennes might face the same fate as another ship, the USS Stark. A year earlier, an Iraqi fighter launched two Exocet missiles at it. 37 sailors were killed, and the ship nearly lost. An inquiry blamed the incident on failures in command. The Stark had not defended itself. Its captain was reprimanded and allowed to resign from the Navy. Captain, air contact still inbound, increasing speed and descending, range 11 miles. Captain Rogers isn't about to make the same mistake. Time is a demon here. At some point in time, you have to make the decision. When the aircraft reached uh, a little over 10 miles, at that point in time, I either make the decision then or I don't make it at all because I reached minimum weapons range. It's the moment of truth. Captain Rogers turns his fire authorization key. Take order, track 4131. Do I have a take order on the contact? Yes, take. Birds away. Rail's clear. Iranian aircraft on course 209, speed 353 knots. As the final warning goes out on the military air distress frequency, Rogers keeps his finger on the hold fire button so he can destroy the missiles if the aircraft finally responds. Estimate 10 seconds to intercept. The crew has confirmed the kill. The plane they believed was attacking them has been destroyed. Captain Rogers thinks he has saved his ship from destruction. Nothing could be further from the truth. Far from saving his crew, Rogers has just made a decision that will shock the world. God damn it, he's getting close. At the height of a naval battle with Iranian gunboats in the Persian Gulf, the USS Vincennes has detected an incoming aircraft. Take order, track 41. In the ship's one. combat information center, that plane has been misidentified as an Iranian F 14 fighter. After the plane has failed to respond to warnings, Captain William Rogers has shot it down.
but Rogers has made a fatal mistake. He's destroyed an Iranian passenger jet flying in an international air corridor. 290 passengers and crew are dead. Iranian television broadcasts distressing footage of their bodies floating in the Gulf. For Captain Rogers, the burden is heavy. Whatever mistakes have been made, he bears the ultimate responsibility. But for the victims' families, it's worse. Captain Rezaian's elder brother, Hossein, tries to identify his remains in a temporary mortuary in Bandar Abbas. I try not to uh, imagine where I went to. I try to forget it, and uh, when I uh, look at those bodies, I just, uh, I just can't control myself, and I just try to, uh, to think about something else, not, uh, not to think of what I saw. Captain Rezaian's body is never recovered. Really, I shuddered our family, especially his kids, uh, his wife, my parents, which uh, they're still living, and uh, and uh, there is not a day that they don't talk about this, uh, of what happened, uh, why it should have happened. Uh. There's an immediate international outcry. The world wants to know how a cruiser with a state-of-the-art combat system could have mistaken a passenger airliner for an attacking Iranian fighter. Captain, do you swear that the evidence you are giving in this matter now an investigation? The US government appoints Rear Admiral William Fogarty to conduct an inquiry to find out what went wrong. My first reaction was it was a tragedy. The thing that stuck the most to me was You've got some, a lot of responsibilities ahead of you, Fogarty, and probably some sleepless truth, nights. And nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. The inquiry is conducted in accord with the Uniform Code of Military Justice. The stakes are high. Investigative journalist Roger Charles is a former Marine officer who's examined the story. You're looking at a guy who's on top of the world. He's the captain of the billion dollar Aegis uh, cruiser. And now he's sitting at a table facing a possible court martial and, uh, you know, even prison time. Admiral Fogarty's team now scrutinizes the actions of the Vincennes crew in forensic detail. When Flight 655 first appears on radar, the USS Vincennes is in the midst of a battle with Iranian gunboats. All aircraft within a radius of 100 kilometers are monitored to ensure they do not pose a threat. So identification supervisor Anderson starts by checking his commercial air schedule to determine if this is a passenger flight. But he's confused. The schedule lists departures in local time, but Anderson is unsure whether that means the time in Bandar Abbas or Bahrain time, which is used on the ship. You have the almost 30 minute delay caused by the late departure of IRR 655 due to a passenger with a visa problem. Then you have the 30 minute different time zone. So he looks at it and he's seeing there's nobody within an hour scheduled to be over us. The IFF system is supposed to distinguish friend from foe. Admiral Fogarty knows it's critical to establish how the Vincennes could have confused a commercial airliner squawking mode three with a fighter emitting mode two. And in your mind, that was not calm air. In my mind, sir, it was not a calm air. And why? Because I had saw that Mode 2 squawk, sir. The Mode 2 was the big indicator for you? Yes, sir. From intelligence, Fogarty discovers that as Flight 655 prepares for takeoff, an Iranian F-14 is also on the tarmac at Bandar Abbas. It now appears that although Anderson rolls his ball tab to hook Flight 655 as it takes off, he leaves it hooked for almost 90 seconds. So although the hook symbol moves towards the Vincennes, the system is still reading IFF signals from the airport at Bandar Abbas. 
It's a human error caused by poor design on this high-tech warship. He left the ball tab on Bandar Abbas. So what we believe happened, and I'm pretty sure this is exactly what happened, he picked up the mode two of the Iranian fighter that was getting ready for takeoff behind the Airbus. The identification of an F-14 appears to confirm intelligence, warning Captain Rogers to anticipate trouble over the July the 4th weekend. He now believes the aircraft is part of a coordinated strike on the Vincennes from both sea and air. Sir, possible calm air. So he places less weight on the warning that the incoming plane is possibly a commercial airliner. Do you recall Lieutenant Montford saying, calm air, calm air? I absolutely remember him telling me that. And I think I raised my hand or something to that effect to indicate that I'd heard him. You held up your decision to fire? Yes, sir. Why? I wanted every bit of information I could get. IFF was an indicator, but I didn't care whether 1100 was an F-14 or that Falker that flies around out there. But at this point, I thought they always talk to us. Iranian aircraft on course 211. The Vincennes transmits a total of 10 radio warnings. Why does Flight 655 never respond? What we do know for sure is the aircraft did not respond to the warnings. He had to have something, he being the commanding officer, as proof that this was commercial error. He never got that. Unidentified Iranian aircraft on course two. But the Vincennes transmits seven warnings on a military frequency that Flight 655 cannot receive. The Airbus did not even have a radio that was set or could accept uh, the military air distress uh, frequency. I mean, it's just not something they had. They had no need for it. They were a commercial airplane. The Vincennes broadcasts only three warnings on the civil distress frequency but they don't clearly identify exactly who the ship is trying to contact. Unidentified aircraft on course 210, speed 350, altitude... The Vincennes radio talkers are citing the aircraft's ground speed. ...bearing 201, 20 miles from you. You are standing into danger and may be subject to United States defensive measures. But Captain Rezaian's instruments show airspeed, a relative measurement. Flight 655's indicated airspeed could have been 50 knots slower than the 350 knot ground speed cited by the Vincennes. So if the pilot hears that, well, who are they talking to? They're not, they haven't identified us. They must be talking to maybe the P-3 or maybe some other Iranian aircraft. Throughout its flight, Iran Air 655 transmits its squawk code, the unique label that tells radars what flight it is. If the Vincennes had called out that squawk code, Captain Rezaian could have known immediately they were talking to him. But the US Navy does not require its radio operators to use this code when talking to civilian aircraft. As Flight 655 nears his ship, Captain, do you wish to engage at 20 miles? The pressure on Captain Rogers becomes intense. Captain, do you wish to engage the target at 20 miles? When you look at the time window that he had, he waited till the very last minute. And it becomes a point of, uh, am I going to shoot or am I not gonna shoot and wait? In which case, he would not be following his responsibilities to protect his ship and his crew. The decisive factor in Captain Rogers' decision to fire are the reports he receives that the plane is descending towards him, apparently about to attack. Altitude declining. It's the crucial moment. The inquiry team presses tactical information coordinator Leach on his call. OK, were you reporting descending elevations over the net? Over the internal net? Yes, sir. So in other words, when you saw that track, that aircraft start descending, you were reporting that up to TAO, CO, Gulf Whiskey? Yes, sir. Like an aircraft's black box, the Vincennes computers have recorded all the data on the Combat Information Center's screens. Those records show that Iran Air 655 had never descended. 
it was in fact ascending the whole time. That was a revelation that uh, we, uh, we had not anticipated. Altitude declining. Is it possible, is it possible that somebody, although the data showed perhaps that it was going up, would say it's going down, descending? Fogarty sends a medical team, including a psychiatrist, to the Vincennes. They report that a condition called scenario fulfillment could have played a part in the tragedy. Range 13 miles. And as it turns out, where you, you believe something so badly is going to happen, that whether the data shows you it's not the case, you believe it's happening. Had those in command on that day checked their monitors, they would have seen that Flight 655 was not diving in a classic attack profile, but was continuing its steady climb. Yet no one thought to do so. Well, Scott, uh, we have this disparity between what the data indicates happened and what the people said they saw at their various altitudes. Any idea why? Well, sir, the disparity baffles me. I thought about this for many days now, and. I came to the realization that this data to me doesn't mean anything because I reacted to people I had operated with who were reliable. And when they reported at short range they had decreasing altitude, increasing speed, I had no reason to doubt them. I had to make a split second recommendation to the commanding officer and I did. So Lieutenant Commander Lustig trusts his men's judgment and Captain Rogers trusts Lieutenant Commander Lustig's my confidence in Lieutenant Commander Lustig confirmed to me that the aircraft was, in fact, a threat. At nine miles, I felt I could no longer delay defensive action. I granted fire and permission. When I looked at the timeline that he had to make a decision and the information he was given upon which to make that decision, it was my feeling, to this day I still feel the same way, that he made the right decision with the main thing in his mind, I don't want my ship to get hit. Take order, track 4131. The Vincennes' sophisticated combat information system gives its crew accurate information, but their fear has created a threat where none exists. After a month, Admiral Fogarty's investigation is over. He finds that the downing of Iran Air 655 was not the result of any negligent or culpable conduct by any US naval personnel. Captain Rogers acted in a prudent manner, given the information available to him and the short time frame in which he had to make his critical decision. Fogarty says Iran must share the responsibility for hazarding one of their civilian airliners in close proximity to hostilities. The US government publishes an edited version of Admiral Fogarty's inquiry, but it has concealed one key fact from the world. That fact will cast a whole new light on the tragedy of Iran Air Flight 655. In August 1988, a detailed inquiry by Admiral William Fogarty into the shooting down of Iran Air 655 concludes that the captain and crew of the USS Vincennes acted properly in the face of what they believed was a threat to their ship. But investigative journalist Roger Charles is not convinced. He reads a copy of the Fogarty inquiry and wonders why it contains no map showing the Vincennes position. I knew the fact that there was no such chart in the Fogarty report, again, was a signal, and a curious signal to me. Why is it not there? Skipper, you better come down. Sounds like the Montgomery's got her nose in a beehive. I'll be right there. When Captain Rogers first hears that Iranian gunboats are harassing merchant shipping, the Vincennes is well south of the Montgomery and destined for port in Bahrain. Gulf Sierra, this is Vincennes. Request permission to support USS Montgomery against surface contacts. Over. Rogers asks Captain Richard McKenna, his surface commander, for permission to turn north to support the Montgomery. 
but McKenna only authorizes him to send his helicopter to investigate. Roger that. Then sends out. Factory in Ocean Lord. But Captain McKenna is later startled to discover that the Vincennes has turned around and has closed on the Montgomery's position. He orders him to leave the helicopter in place and turn back immediately. My own personal opinion is it really did feel that they were looking for action when they, when they went to see the, the Elmer Montgomery. Um, my, my own feeling is that the situation was not out of control. It was really my call, and yet, uh, even though they were assigned another station, they took it upon themselves to be there. And um, to that extent, I feel that, you know, I mean, that's, that's where the, the, the general feeling, and not, not just my own, comes that maybe they were looking for trouble. Jesus! Trinity Lord, this is Ocean Lord, 2-5, we are taking... But once the Iranian gunboats fired upon the Vincennes helicopter, the situation changed. Close Ocean Lord's position at best speed. The rules of engagement now allow Captain Rogers to respond with force. General Porters, officer of the He's now authorized to head off in hot pursuit of the gunboats. But where does that lead him? In 1990, Roger Charles obtains a copy of a restricted report on the destruction of Iran Air 655 by the International Civil Aviation Organization. It gives the Vincennes coordinates. When Charles plots them on a chart, he makes a startling discovery. At the time of the shootdown, the Vincennes is over four kilometers inside Iranian territorial waters. By chasing the gunboats back into Iranian territory, Rogers inadvertently places his ship directly in the flight path of Iran Air 655. If Rogers had not taken uh, the Vincennes up to uh, attack the gunboats, uh, there would have been no shootdown of IR 655. I mean, that's clear. There would have been no ongoing surface action. Rogers would have had his radar screen set for the air side of things. Uh, the focus would have only been on uh, the air picture. Uh, they would have had plenty of time to um, make a proper determination that this was a commercial airliner. Despite the tragedy, the crew of the Vincennes receive a hero's welcome on their return to port in San Diego. Any ship in the Navy is a multi-mission ship. Captain. Do you wish to engage the target at 20 miles? Lieutenant Commander Scott Lustig is awarded a Navy Commendation Medal for his ability to maintain his poise and confidence under fire. Take order, track 4131. Captain Rogers receives the Legion of Merit for his performance as commanding officer of the Vincennes. Both men have since retired from the Navy. Every year, the families of those who died on Iran Air 655 commemorate their loss in the Persian Gulf. For Hussein Rezaian, the brother of Flight 655's captain, time has not healed the wounds. I still feel the same way. Although I try to keep myself busy, not to think about it, because it's still, uh, it's, <clears throat> I mean, it's an unforgettable human tragedy. Even after 17 years passed, the horrors of uh, uh, <clears throat> what went on in that, uh, in that day, you know, still, uh, still lingers on in everybody's life. In a world where technology grows ever more sophisticated, fear, the most basic of human instincts, can create the greatest tragedies.